record? I don't exist. I didn't kill the man. Elson, do you think that Asha is a guy named? Yes. No comment. Here we go. Um, also, I forgot. I am not. I used to be diehard about this. I don't care too much anymore. But I'd say I don't care. It's like interesting to me, but not that interesting. Kind of fits a video. But the March Madness safety. I used to be like die hard and I'm so down. Yeah, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great. But I think I will offer a uh, I'll have a bracket for us on Wednesday to fill out and then I'll come up with some sort of prize for whoever wins. Extra credit. No, no, I can't offer. I could offer like a minor level of like extra credit if you want like a, uh, a couple like homework points. Yeah, points. yeah, but I can't, I gotta be careful offering extra credit for something that can't be, you know, besides the main Jeopardy, I guess, is that universally won like the Kleenex boxes. But I could offer some sort of cash prize or gift. <laughs> yeah, if you all put in ten dollars. I mean, we used to do that, and then there were some like complaints about the gambling ring I was running. It was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you take everybody. I mean, I'm not, I mean we are gambling together, and that becomes the winner's free bet. So, but you guys could always set up your own gambling ring and donate money to Brian, yeah. and he could set it up for you. I just can't facilitate. I Everybody has to chip in five dollars and whatever that's. Oh, yeah. So can can one of us just win it? I'm not saying you can or can. Or you can trade in your money. We're on camera. And then so you want to trade it back? Like we all drop five or ten dollars, put it in the um, thing, and then whoever had the You can't say anything. No, you, you cannot do that. It's just an actual money. You should trade in your own currency, or you can trade in your money, and then trade around that. I'd be like my own Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, this could be the currency. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so therefore, we're not gambling with money. We just we're, we're gambling, gambling, gambling with trying this to currency. We can turn to the currency. This is our new currency. We're just buying this time. Yeah. Kind of like a casino with the chips, but we're not actually gambling or Because we're not a casino. Yeah. What are you talking about? We're not. We're not. We're we're like my dad went to try. Vegas for a trade show and just we love pulled out a slot and went to $600. Yeah, my name is Matt. It's driving angles. Okay, we've got a few theorems. I'll draw them up here on the board. And then you'll uh, hopefully um, be able to analyze them as well. Inscribed angles theorem, you, you don't need to know the theorem. The theorem is just 9 5, which is chapter 9 or 9 4. Um, you don't need to know the theorem in terms of its number, but you should know how it works. It says if an angle is inscribed, now there's our circle. What's an in, what does inscribed mean? We've talked about <coughs> central angles. Central angles come from the center. center. Amazing. <laughs> you guys, this guy's average is 65 point whatever. I can't believe it. Oh, What's the average we've had on our test? Because you guys are so good. Central yeah. angle comes from the center. Inscribed angle, where does an inscribed angle come from? Not the center. From the inscribed. From the inscribed, exactly. Man, this guy's on fire from the inscribed. All right, there's your inscribed angle. It's, at, it's vertex is on the circle. Okay, now it says... If an angle is inscribed in a circle, then the measure of the angle. Do you want me to yell a little louder? Yes. The measure of the angle. Thank you. Can you say it in an accent too? The measure of the angle. <laughs> it's hard to do an accent on my yell. I just got a sound of a little. I go a little chime. Yes. Yeah. That's why I said it quietly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or I got to get my accent in, I can yell a little bit. Now that you have a watch. So <laughs> the uh, angle slide up is equal to, um, if you remember from the central angle, don't draw this, it confuses you. But if you remember from the central angle, then this alpha was the same as the arc measure, true? Yes. False. And it was absolutely true. Alpha was the same as the arc measure, okay? 
So now, though, theta is not going to be the same as the arc measure. It's going to be what? Bigger or smaller? It's right? bigger. You think smaller. theta is smaller. bigger? It's going to be smaller. It's going to be smaller, right, by how much? By a lot. By a lot, right? Well, if like we have half. AB, how about a half, right? So theta is equal to one half of AB. I need this. There you go. That makes sense for us because if you think about it, you can draw this if you want. But if we have a circle here and we have an inscribed angle, what happens if the inscribed angle goes like this and goes like this? And we've got this arc measure like this, and this is 180 degrees on the arc measure. Well, what does it look like the angle is going to be? 90. 90, you bet. Because this forms a semi circle. And therefore, this would be 90, you bet. So it's a half of the arc measure if it's an inscribed angle. All right, we've got a yell in this action. Let's see how we can do. Let's go to the next theorem. We've got ourselves a theorem 9 5. And it says if two inscribed angles of a circle or congruent circles intersect congruent arcs or the same arc, then the angles are congruent. It's a mouthful, but I'll write it on the board, make it look a little easier, possibly. Here we go. Here we got a circle. All right, it says two inscribed angles, right? I believe it said that. Probably. Voice of, yeah. Circle. Right, okay, here we go. So we said we got an inscribed angle here, and it goes out to there. There we go. And then it says, hey, you got, we'll call that theta. And then it says you got another inscribed angle. Let me double check, make sure I'm reading correct here. If two inscribed angles into the circle, Intercept congruent arcs in the same or the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So if we look at this and we measure here, we go like this to there and to there. But it looks like we'll call this alpha. These angle theta, this angle alpha, they intercept the same arc. True? Yeah. You bet, right there. We'll call this shut. A B doesn't matter. And go, they intercept the same arc. Therefore, if they intercept the same arc, we know that theta is equal to alpha. True. No. It, it's true. Oh. <laughs> if they intercept the same arc, then they're both at the same angle. Because okay. they intercept here and here, same spot. It's true. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. <laughs> if the theorem 9.5, I'm sorry, 9.6, Theorem 9 of 6 is this. It says, if, if an inscribed angle of a circle intercepts a semicircle, we already did this one actually. Let's go like this. So, you got an inscribed angle, if it intercepts a semicircle, like that. Okay, so that's not the best, but it's okay. We'll go like this and like that. Okay, so that. Yeah, if an inscribed angle of a circle, we'll call it alpha, if it intercepts a semicircle, go all the way across there, then the angle is a right angle. Alpha, or sloppy side, alpha equals 90. If this is intercepted at a semicircle, which means the dotted line would be what on the circle? The diameter. It will be the diameter, which means it goes through the? Center. Center, very good, through the center, which means how many degrees is this arc measure from here to here? 180. We already discussed that thing right there. So alpha would equal 90 if this was a diameter and it was 180 degrees there. Very good. All right. The last theorem is if a quadrilateral is inscribed, a quadrilateral, how many sides? Four. 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 It's true. If a quadrilateral, this is theorem 9 dash, what we want this? 7. Okay. We have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, which means all four corners are on the circle. It does not have to be a rectangle. Let's make it look a little funky like that. So that is a quadrilateral. It's got one, two, three, four, and it's inscribed, right? All the vertices are on the circle. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if something is going to happen is this. It states for us, its opposite angles are supplementary. So, Normally, we wouldn't say that, but if it's inscribed in a circle, then it's true. So we, let's just use variables x, y, z, and p. If it's inscribed, then the opposite angles, not, not adjacent, 
or consecutive to opposite angles are supplementary. So x plus y equals what does supplementary mean? Do 180. 180. So x plus y equals 180, and therefore z plus p equals 180. So opposite angles are supplementary. And it's actually it's very. It makes a lot of sense. It does in my mind at least, because 180 is half of what? 360. So if you look at this angle, x, x goes here and here and intercepts, let's do it in a different color, it intercepts this portion right here. Goes here all the way around to there, yeah? X says, y, we'll do it in a different color, y goes like this, and it intersects this portion, that y goes there, it goes all the way around like that. How many degrees are covered? With the blue, 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 red and green. <laughs> with the red and green, there's no blue. It's the dialect. It's the dialect. Well, it's so with the red and the green, how many degrees are covered? 360. Since it's inscribed angles, inscribed angles represent how much sure they are. One half. What's half of 360? On a geniuses, I am. All right. Geniuses, you are. Oh, I won't say that, but. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, I'll give you a few examples here. Yeah, let's go like this. Draw yourself a picture. It says RS is parallel to TV. RS is parallel to TV. Like that. And then also says for us. Arc SV, arc SV equals 86. I'm going to draw a picture for us. It has all this in it. And it says measure of arc SP equals 110. Very good. Now, draw a picture. Okay, this is a decent circle. And we're going to go like this. I'll move out of the way in a second. Arc to S. And then we got ourselves T to V like that. Okay. And now we know T, V, and R, S are parallel. Like that. Okay. Then the center is at P. Now P will make it right there. P is the center. I didn't put that up there, but we'll do the circle P. P is the center. Now from P, we're going to draw there and draw there. Make it a central angle. And then we got one other thing going, and that is going to be down to here and down to here, and we have Q. That's a little bit of drawing, but remember, as you draw this, make a note, is Q the center of the circle? No. No. I told you P is, and I wrote it up there. So P is the center. Q is not the center of the circle. Is Q an inscribed angle? No. So don't try to say that it's uh, a central angle, which means it equals the arc, and don't try to say that it's inscribed, which means it's half of the arc. Neither are true. We just have to find another way to solve for some of the parts. So we're going to solve for several parts here. And the first one is this, measure of arc RS. Second one is measure of angle SRV. There's lots we're going to solve for, but let's just start with that for a second, make sure we're on the same page. So let's do this. It is important to make a note that RS is parallel to TV. That's important. It'll help us with some of the parts. Um, okay, let's look at this. SV is 86. So let's fill that in with the green. If we know arc SV right here is 86, like that. Oops. 86, like that. And it says angle RSP, R to SP. That does not look right. Mm -hmm. Let me double check there. I'm sorry on that. RPS makes a lot more sense. Changes to RPS. Like that. Sorry about that. That makes a lot more sense. R to P to S is 110 degrees. So we know right in here is 110 degrees. All right. Now, let's start with this. We need to find arc RS. That goes from here to here. What might arc RS be? 110. Why? Right. Since P RPS is a central angle, then the arc, right? The arc is the same. So that's where we get 110 for that. 
All right, let's look at SRV. SRV for the angle. Let's go in SRV. I heard a 35. Who said that? Mish. Yeah. Why is it 35? Because I realized it's an isosceles. Absolutely. How do you know it's an isosceles triangle? Parallel. Uh, now, it's not to do with the parallel plot. Oh. Because oh. we're just looking at this. Why is that isosceles? You're true. You're right. The two lengths are equal. Why? Because it's at the point to two separate points. Somebody oh, help explain it a little bit. The midpoint. The midpoint. The radius. The radius is right. They're both radiuses. We know radiuses are the same length, right? And so, therefore, this is the same as this. Therefore, what kind of triangle is it? Isosceles. Therefore, this angle and this angle are the same. Therefore, we could say 180 minus 110 is 70. 70 divided by 2 is 35. So we know that's 35 and that's 35. Nice job, Mish. All right. Now we've got lots more to do. STV. Uh, let's do this and just start filling them in. Measure angle STV equals something. Get that done. And then SVR. That one up there. Measure angle SVR. Five. It's going to be RTV. Measure angle RTV. And six. It's a juicy one here. RTS. Measure the angle RTS. PRS seven measure of angle PRS like that. I'll just give you a minute here uh, to try to fill those out. Check with your support team around you. If you can't get it, that's okay. We will cover it together here momentarily. Uh, uh, I'm confused on two. On two. It's an isosceles triangle. Well, I know, but wouldn't that I be guess. SRV, not SRV? All right, did I do it wrong? SRV. We did it wrong, Mish. Thank you. <coughs> this oh, guy's man. calling us out. That's good. Um, thank you. Everybody hit pause. Forget 337. Micah is the voice of reason for us. This is true. 35 and 35, right? That's true. But that would be for what? S to R to P. We were looking at SRV. I got oh. duped. Okay, so SRP is 35 if we need that. But SRV is a different, right? Because it's like coming off like this. So we're looking for this whole angle there. So if you were to, for a second, eliminate this part right here, it makes it a little easier to look at. S to R to V, that angle, erase this for a second. S to R to V, we got rid of this portion. What does that do? It intersects this arc, right? Yeah. What's this arc right here? 86. What kind of angle is SRV? Is it central uh, or inscribed? Inscribed. Inscribed. Therefore, what's the measure of it? Half. 43. 43, because it's half of the 86. 43, very good. So now I know this big angle is 43 for the big angle. This little angle in here, let me drop back to there. So that little angle in there is 35. We'll leave that because we already stated that. But then the big angle is 43 because it's the inscribed. Thank you for that catch, Micah. Now proceed to STV. That saves us a lot of grief later, possibly. Make sure I have the correct ones up there. STV. SVR, actually looks good, RTV, RTS, and PRS. Those look good.
our brief pause here. The bell's about to ring here in about 30 seconds, so let's cover a couple of things. It says RS is parallel to TV. If this is 86, what do we know about this side over here? It's 86 as well. Very good. Okay, so then also let's talk about STV. 